Here is Major Gregory Keane to continue the story of Deadly Nightshade. I'm in Felix Huberman's house, but of course you know that. And you know about the cable from Milo Fentress that explained how a brace of tough characters came to be chasing me around Sydney five minutes after I arrived as Richard Hayden. But according to Huberman, I'm to lie low here at his place till we've tied one or two loose threads together. But until I've checked on that cable from Fentress, I'm doing nothing of the kind. I'm making some moves of my own that Huberman is not going to know about until I'm ready. But right at this moment, I'm enjoying breakfast with the chap. Or lunch, whichever you prefer. Hmm. More coffee? No, thanks. I say, let's have another look at that file on Kessel Ring, shall we? No, it's all right. Don't get up. I'll bring it over. Oh, oh get down, Carlo. Get down. Boy. Keep clear of him, Keen. I think he's remembering that uh, clip you knocked him out with last night. Yes, he's not joking. Take it quietly, boy. <laughs> Mrs. Rose! Look, get this dog out of here, will you please? Come here, Carlo. Come here. Quite a wolfish character, that. Yes, but remarkably intelligent. Comes in rather handy. As what? I might show you sometime. Hmm. Yes, well, let's get back to this file. Mm, all right. Well, it's pretty slim so far. It's all we've been able to get. Slim is right. Now, let me see. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, so Kesselring arrived here went through the customs and was seen to enter a cab. The number of the cab wasn't noted. Mm, that's right. The local police have made the rounds, but not a cab driver in Sydney remembers driving Kesselring away from Rose Bay. Correct. Oh, um, heave over that marmalade, will you? No, yes. Stop. Apart from the cab drivers, you've, uh... Yes, you've questioned the customs men. None of them could contribute a thing. Mm. An airport porter who carried Kessel Ring's bags. And a clerk called Doby at the terminal desk. All blanks. Mm, right again. Excuse me, we'll again. Yes, of course. Felix Huberman. Carlotta here. Felix. Nick Barnes is here with me now. Briefed? Not completely. Not till you arrive. Good. Uh, give me... Give me an hour... Can you get Keen here tonight? Yes, of course. Wait for me. That was one of the chaps at headquarters. I'm afraid I'll have to leave you here alone for a while. <laughs> I'll be glad to take it quietly. Uh, look, I've just had an idea. Yeah. You don't know much about Sydney, do you, Keen? Not a thing. But I thought perhaps uh, tonight, after dark, we'll hop in my car and wander around a bit. We can get the lie of the land. Mm-hmm. Sounds fine. We might even pay a short social call. There's no point in you being bored to extinction just because you have to stay undercover. And uh, who will we be calling on? Well, uh, I thought of a most charming and cultivated friend of mine. <laughs> Rather more than a friend, actually. Carlotta Magnani. She has a place over on the North Shore. I shall be delighted. Oh, that's splendid. Right, oh, then... Hold the fort till dinner time or so. And anything you want, sing out for Mrs. Rose. And for Pete's sake, keep away from Carlo. Oh, that will be a pleasure. So long. Mrs. Rose, where the deuce have I put my gloves? Why is it I can never find anything? Hmm. Now, what doesn't ring true? What's in the back of my head about Felix Huberman? I... Well, there's only one way to find out. No, not the dog. Later. Not now. Carlo is eager to get at him. We are not entertaining Major Keane for Carlo's benefit. Understand? What if he tries to leave the house? Just note the time of his departure and return, Mrs. Rose. I've told you. How long will he remain here? Well, that depends entirely on what happens at Carlotta's tonight. Yes, Mr. Huberman. I watch him all the time. 
If he uses the phone, either listen on your extension or cut him off. And don't on any account let him talk to Evelyn Channel. What if he goes to her flat? She won't be there. I've already arranged to have her out of the flat till she goes on at the Poinsettia Club tonight. Yes, Mr. Huberman. Well, that's all. And remember, I'm relying on you. Yes, Mr. Huberman. But I'm waiting till we can let Carlo go. This man keen we should let Carlo attend to him for us. The house is empty and quiet. But that gorgon of a housekeeper is around somewhere with Carlo the Alsatian, three quarters wolf. You know, I don't like that dog. I don't like the silence. And I don't like what I just read in the morning paper about a barman from the Poinsettia Club called Charlie Brett being found beaten almost to death in the lane. The chap who gave me Evelyn Channel's address was a barman and he answered to Charlie. Yes. Yes, I think I'll go out. There are some things I have to know and I won't get them by hiding in Felix Schuberman's house. I'm going back to the airport. Mrs. Rose? Are you there, Mrs. Rose? Yes, I'm here, Major Keene. Oh, I, uh, I just wanted to tell you that I'm going out. I should be back in about an hour. Mr. Huberman said you'd be staying here, sir. I can't help that. Very well, sir. If Mr. Huberman should come back before me, tell him I shan't be too long. And keep control of that dog. What's the matter with the infernal thing? Looks as though nothing could make it happy but tearing someone to bits. We can talk in here, sir. The terminal's too noisy out at the desk. Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Derby. Well, now, I believe you've already talked to the police and Mr. Huberman about Professor Bruno Kesselring. That's right, Major Keene. I've told them everything I can. Yes, well, I want you to think back to the day he arrived. You were at the same job out there at the airport reception desk? Yes. And what happened? I've been over and over it, sir. <laughs> Look, you've seen my credentials. Uh, go over it again, eh? Oh, well, just... Really nothing to go over. The professor arrived just like any other passenger, went through the customs... Apart from that, did he do one thing or say one word out of the ordinary? Mm, not that I noticed. Was he met? No, he was alone when he went out those glass front doors. Yeah. And did he take his luggage or leave any of it here? He took it out to his cab. Well, did he go to the buffet? Did he speak to anyone, nod, make any kind of a signal? I didn't spend all my time staring at Professor Kesselring. No, I don't expect you did, but I'm hoping you noticed just one little thing. I'm sorry, sir. The police badgered me for two hours, and I've told them everything I possibly can. And I'm really very busy today. We're four flights in. Oh, and... All right, old man. Look, um, take this address and phone number, will you? If you should remember anything significant, get in touch with Evelyn Channel at once. Can you remember that name? Evelyn Channel. Mm -hmm. Very well, Major. And I'm sorry to have taken up your time. Thanks very much, anyway. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Derby. Oh, uh, by the way, can I post a letter here? Yes, you can. Very yeah, good. Uh, now, why didn't I think of that before? Why didn't you think of what before? Professor Kesselring posted a letter. He asked me just as you did, standing there in the doorway. You didn't catch sight of it, did you? No, he just asked so me. Bruno Kesselring posted a letter before he disappeared, and I'm the first to know about it. Oh, well, thanks, old man. I don't know if it's going to be of any help, but let's hope for the best. So long. Are you ready to talk to Nick Barnes, Felix? Oh, I think so. How much have you told him already? That he is to become Gregory Keane, that he'll be given Keane's papers, Keane's clothes, Keane's credentials, and every scrap of information about the man we can supply. Yes, well, that should be enough. The first thing is to let him study Keane. He'll have that opportunity tonight. But first, did you have to send Guzik to beat up that barman from the poinsettia? They have their instructions at the club. Charlie handed on Evelyn Channel's address to Keane. Did Keen see this morning's papers? They're lying about the house, I suppose. So why? There was an item on page three about Charlie Brett. What if Keen saw it and puts two and two together? Wouldn't he pay a second call on Charlie Brett and ask who had him beaten and why? Yes? Mr. Huberman, Keen has left the house. All right. Bring me when he gets back. Mrs. Rose. Where's Guzik? Wait there. 
My guzik. Take it. Say, Mike, do you know where Charlie Brett lives? Yeah. Take Stephen. Go and get him. Bring him straight here. Well, come on, jump to it, no? Okay. Do we kill him at once? Before he can talk to Keen again? Actually, Carlotta, darling, no. You know, this is perfect. <laughs> we'll let Major Gregory Keen kill Charlie Brett for us. I've pulled off another long shot. Kessel Ring posted the letter and it leaves me two more shots to go. I have to find the letter. I have to make a signal to Milo Fentress. But most important of all, I have to find Charlie Brett again. And I have to find him first. Does Keen find the barman before Huberman's thugs? Listen to the next chapter of this story of intrigue, Deadly Nightshade. <laughs>